Um, welcome to Symposiac's podcast. Uh, this is uh, Fidel Ernesilio, and I am uh, the lead pastor here at Symposia Covenant Church, and I'm here with uh, my co-host, um, uh, Lawrence Gonzaga. Uh, he's a Catholic friend, um, and we are uh, talking about uh, Thomas J. Ord's uh, Open and Relational Theology, An Introduction to Life-Changing Ideas, and we are on Chapter 5 today. Uh, we're not going to cover all of Chapter 5, but I at least intend to at least cover probably the first four pages of, of that chapter. Uh, um, uh, Thomas J. Ord entitled this uh, Present. So again, all of this, uh, so just in case you're not familiar uh, with Open and Relational Theology, uh, it's a kind of theology that, um, you know, if you just look at the word open, it, it means um, that God is open in relation to the future, uh, meaning God does not know um, um, every single future event, right? Uh, because uh, future events are also dependent and contingent or contingent on uh, what humans uh, decide to do, uh, freely uh, chooses uh, to do. Uh, what humans freely choose to do. Um, so, uh, and then relational simply means that God is um, genuinely um, uh, have some kind of, uh, has some kind of relationship with us where uh, uh, God is not just simply influencing us, but what we do also influence God uh, in some sense. So there's like this two-way um, uh, relationship uh, between a God and humans. So those are, in a way, like the basic uh, tenets of um, open and relational theology. And so today we're going to talk about uh, a present. Uh, it's called, uh, he entitled it Present. But the first uh, four uh, pages of that chapter uh, really talks about God being uh, the creator. Okay. Uh, or uh, not just God, but God and humans as co-creators. Okay. So it is common in Christianity to assume that God has a role in the creation of the universe. Uh, so, so in a way, you know, open and relational theology does not deny that. Uh, rather, it affirms right, that God creates. But it also affirms that God is not the only one who creates. Uh, rather, God and humans are co-creators. Uh, or in bringing about things in the world. Um, uh, so so um, one of the emphasis of open and relational theology is that humans uh, participate in the process of bringing about something in the world, in creating something in the world. Now, you can look around you and you observe um, animals uh, also um, have certain degree of creativity in them or a certain level of agency uh, in creating some things. So you have birds that create nests, right? Um, uh, and you have uh, uh, um, you know, other animals that actually, uh, or bears that make uh, uh, dens. Um, so, so you see this in animals to some degree. Uh, but humans uh, are probably... Um, significantly more creative than than animals and um so even when uh, according to ord even when we engage in sexual affairs for example uh we are participating in that business of creation right so a, a huge part of uh what humans do in relations in relation to god uh is is uh, uh, uh creating something Right. Um, creating something. So um, I don't know if you wanted to express uh, some some of your initial thought, um, Lawrence, uh, before we look at the next section here. Sure. I can't I, I can't really think of anything that I would disagree with, even from multiple perspectives in Catholicism. Um, we. Well, there might be a difference in views, right? So you might you're you're already familiar with the the general doctrine of predestination and its various forms. Uh, 
whether it's sort of Molinism and versus some kind of Thoman, you know, variations of Thomist ideas. Um, you know, um, within Catholicism, there is uh, two uh, ideas that can't be dispensed with, right? Uh, as opposed to our um, reformed, reformed Christian brothers and sisters uh, mm -hmm. who believe only in predestination but no free will. But Catholics have to um, accept that there is predestination and there is free will, and somehow those two things coexist and 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 uh, work together somehow. Um, the Molinists um, believe seems to emphasize more of the sort of the free will aspect of it that God predestines in conformity to or in consistency with. Um, man's free will, mm -hmm. whereas, as I understand, Tom, the Thomas view is God's predestination precedes and is not in consideration of man's free will, although there is free will in there somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, but but his predestination is is sovereign. In that sense, they agree with the with the Calvinists that God's choices of the elect are sovereign. It has nothing to do with anything in us because grace is, 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 um, um, and favor uh, is entirely God's, um, purview. <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything good in us. If there's anything good in us, it's because God has placed that goodness in us or has moved us towards that through grace. So, in, in any case, there's there's variation, you know, where you fall in that spectrum. Um, and so in what sense do we then co-create? It just depends on where you are in that spectrum, right? Because uh, we're either strongly collaborators and God considers, you know, our reactions, actions, and, you know, thoughts and all that stuff. Or it's all entirely his sovereign plan. And somehow free will fits in there in the Thomistic worldview. I don't, again, I, I think I mentioned before, I've read Thomas's section on free will and I can't, I can't fathom how free will operates in that system of his, because it's really emphasizing predestination. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, again, so the bottom line is there's, there's variation within the Catholic, you know, theological arena. Uh, so I can't commit to any other than my personal views, right? So I, I, I couldn't represent all those different uh, mm -hmm. variations. So anyway, I, I don't know if that's helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's just uh, we're just setting the stage here uh, for what we will be covering. Um, 